Uh, having a stammer can be so stressful and frustrating it can have devastating effect on self-confidence and life in general. Now, a new trial at Oxford University involving electrical brain stimulation aims to improve fluency in speech. Breakfast Graham Satchel went to meet one of the volunteers taking part. My stammer makes me feel often frustrated, um, often ashamed, often that I'm and, and, and deficient in some way. And I felt my stammer was just a big sort of anchor around my legs and I was just uh, in the ocean with this anchor around my legs and I felt that was my, st my stammer. Not just a speech impediment, but Naheem says a life impediment. His stammer has stopped him from using the phone, having relationships, applying for certain jobs. In um, Italy, coffee is, is synonymous with espresso. Naheem is in Oxford taking part in a research project. We like it here because we can st study and be... Um, uh, um, uh. After assessing his normal speech, electrodes are placed on each side of Naheem's head. A very weak, painless current, just one milliamp, is passed through the brain. So this is a what well, this and Gromit cartoon, and there is a hand which has appeared out of the sofa, which has launched a tennis ball through a hole in a in a picture frame. What we think happens is that some of that current will change. Um, the reactivity of the brain cells directly underneath those electrodes and make them more ready to kind of do their job, more ready to fire, if you like. There are physical differences in the brains of people who stammer, particularly the ventral premotor cortex. This is an MRI scan of Naheem as he speaks. Researchers are studying not just connections in the brain, but how messages are sent and received to the throat and mouth. First time they come face Brain face stimulation face doesn't face work face on its own, but it can increase the effectiveness of speech therapy. Early results show fluency of speech has improved for some by a third. I felt that I was able to manage my stammer in some way. There were a lot of words which I thought I couldn't say, but during this uh, research session, I was able to say all the words. This was Naheem a decade ago. How did you get here today? Um, I came by a... Today, he's just finished a PhD in the underlying causes of stammering and he started doing stand-up. I am a stammer and that means we could be here until closing time. <laughs> I always try to do things that my previous self thought I couldn't do. So the piece of advice people give me most often is they say, slow down, breathe and think before you speak. <laughs> I'm like, OK, I haven't tried any of those things before. <laughs> Whatever the benefits new research may bring, Naheem says he's now accepted his stammer, even embraced it. I've accepted that it's just as much a part of me as my hands, arms or legs. And I'm not trying to push against it anymore. I'm, I'm not trying to push my stammer away. Wherever I go, my stammer is walking alongside me now. The cure is acceptance. Oh, it's lovely to see that kind of positive note. Um, Rachel Everard is here. She's um, from the British Stammering Association. Lovely to Good see morning. you. Thanks so much for joining us. And that is really interesting, isn't he? He talks about acceptance. Do you think that is a lesson we could all probably learn? Absolutely. I mean, that is the one thing that will make the biggest difference to the lives of people who stammer is acceptance, both for people who stammer to accept their stammering and also, very importantly, for the public to accept stammering and to become much more tolerant of stammering. And this is something which you yourself have, have had to deal with. So how did you sort of work on it yourself? Yes, yeah, so I have a stammer and um, I still do. And um, what has made the biggest difference for me is having the right kind of therapy at the right time um, but also support of friends and families and um, employers 
Um, and I think that what's key in all this is for um, the perception of stammering to be looked at, to mm. be examined. Um, and they're talking about this new, um, perhaps the lo looking at these clinical trials. Um, is it a good idea to be looking at this type of thing, do you think? Absolutely, as well. I think that what is important is that people who stammer have an informed choice that um, whatever they decide to do, whether they decide to have therapy or not, that um, there's a wide range of therapy approaches available to them. But also there is the option of perhaps not needing or wanting therapy. And that, that's, mm. that's also fine. Lots of people getting in contact and reacting to Naeem's uh, film, uh, which he was talking to Graham Satchel for us earlier. Lots of people saying sort of do's and don'ts, which I'll come to you in a minute. I just want to read you what Matthew says. I used to have a stammer. It took me a few years to be able to control it. Now all I have is a slight pause in my speech that is almost imperceptible. And he says Naeem has done a brilliant job in accepting and controlling it. In terms of those do's and don'ts, mm -hmm. so if you're in a conversation with someone who's obviously, yes. you know, struggling with, with a stammer, what, what are the right things to do? What are the wrong things? The right things to do are to give people time, so to give them as much time as they need to say what they want to say. Don't finish the sentence off. Exactly. Thank you. That was my second point. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's really key as well. Um, to keep natural eye contact. Um, it might be that the person who stammers looks away, but for you to, to keep natural eye contact and to continue to show interest in what the person is saying, mm. and um, rather than focusing on how they're saying it. And there are some sort of misconceptions, aren't there, about people who might have a stammer? Yes. There are. So there are a few myths that are important to dispel. So, for example, when it comes to the causes of stammering, we know that stammering is not caused by anxiety or nervousness. We know that there's a biological basis to stammering, as has been shown by the research. Um, and also that, um, yeah, people who stammer are no less nervous or anxious than the general population. Fascinating, wouldn't it, if this, if they were able to, you know, this research was able to sort of reduce the mm. prevalence of it at all? Yes, I think that's one route to go. But I think sometimes that the focus on fluency can be unhelpful because mm. we know that for people who have been stammering for some time, research indicates that it's unlikely that they're going to stop stammering altogether, right. and that if we focus too much on fluency, then people can start to feel, well, um, if I haven't managed to do that, then there's something wrong with me. Mm. Um, so we know that um, there are different approaches available to help people who stammer, and that there is great hope as well for people who stammer. Mm. But uh, coming back to our previous point, I think that, that we as a society can make a real difference by becoming more tolerant because it's often the impact of stammering that is the key. That, you know, I can stammer and that's okay, but if I feel that people are judging me negatively, mm -hmm. then that's going to have a huge impact on how I lead my life. And that comes back to the original point, doesn't it, about um, acceptance. Yes. Thank you very much for coming to see us. Thank you. Um, it's 8.51. Should we get some weather? Let's find out what uh, Carol...